Hey guys, today what we're going to be doing is looking at how to simplify square roots. So what we're going to do is I have the square root of 72, uh, rad a negative radical 72. And essentially what this is saying is negative 1 times radical 72. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the square root of 72. Now you might have noticed that that is not a perfect square. So what I need to do is I need to find pairs and then pull it out. So let's go ahead and start with this. The square root of 72, two numbers that multiply to 72 are 8 and 7. Nope, 8 and 9. Um, and then we just continue to do the prime factorization, which means we continue to break these down. So 4 and 2, and 2 and 2. All these 2's are all prime. And then 9 can break down to 3 and 3. So I'm only now looking at my prime numbers because 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 is going to be 72. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to find my pairs. So I have one pair. I write a 2 here and a 2 here. Remember, 72 is the area and I'm just trying to find the side length. So that just took care of those. Uh, the next one I have a, another pair of these 3's. So we're going to put a 3 here and a 3 here. Now anything I pulled out, I multiply together. So that's just going to be 6. And now what I'm going to do is see if there's anything left over that I, um, out of my prime numbers that I did not pull out. And that is this 2. That means it's still in the radical. There's essentially a radical sign out of all of these. Um, And this 2 never was able to get the square rooted. So therefore, it's still left with the square root of 2. Now, let's not forget there was still that times negative 1, so it's going to be negative 6 radical 2. So if I said find the square root of it, this is your answer, negative 6 radical 2. So let's go ahead and look at fractions. Oops. All right, so let's go ahead and look at fractions. I have an area of 1 over 64, and I want to find the side length. Whenever we're given a fraction, it looks uh, taking the square root is easier than it looks. All we do is take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. The square root of 1 is just 1, and the square root of 64 is 8. Those are perfect squares, and so we're done there. That's all. All right, so let's go ahead now and look at what this would look like with... Um, uh, what am I looking to? Uh, with variables. So I have 44 a to the fifth, b to the hundredth. And as we talked about before, uh, let's start with 44. Two numbers that multiply to 44 is 4 and 11. And two numbers that multiply to 11 are 2 and 2. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take, uh, figure out if I have any pairs, which I do. I have a pair of twos. So I want you to notice I circled the pair. One of the twos goes here. One of the twos goes here. But I still have this 11, so we're going to come back and look at that later. Uh, now what we're going to do is let's look at these a's. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. If I had the square root of a to the fifth, that would mean I would have five a's lined up, and I would be circling pairs. So I circled two pairs. So I put an a squared here and an a squared here. Because a times a is a squared. But I have a leftover a, so we'll come back to that later as well. Now, the next thing is I have a 100 Bs. I really don't want to write 100 Bs out. So remember, all I'm doing is dividing by 2. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. So 50 go here, 50 go here. So now let's go ahead and look at the stuff that I couldn't have an extra pair. Anything that you didn't have an extra pair, that is just going to be left inside your square root. So it is going to be the square root of the 11, because that did not have a pair, as well as that extra a. So I'm going to write the square root of 11a as well. Okay. So if I uh, ask you to find the square root, just one of the side lengths is your answer. So 2a squared b to the fifth, 50th radical 11a. All right, so if I looked at one with just variables now, so I have the square root, excuse me, I have a7, a to the 7th, b to the 8th, c to the 9th, and I just said let's go and find the, uh, the side lengths. So you could possibly write 7a's, 8b's, 9c's, and circle your pairs. 
but I'm going to show you a quick little shortcut. All we are going to do is divide. So, and you're going to write the whole number. So if you have 7 divided by 2, that means you are going to have three whole numbers, but you're going to have a leftover a. So that stays inside the radical. So anytime you have an odd exponent and you're dividing by 2, you're just going to have one of those uh, left over in the radical. So then when we move on over here, I have a, uh, excuse me, b to the 8th. I divide that by 2, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. There are no leftovers. There are no remainders. So I just do this. And my last one is I have c to the 9th. The 9 is odd. So if I did 9 divided by 2, that will have a remainder. So how many whole numbers, how many non-fractions can I make? Well, 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. That means I have four whole numbers. So that's going to be c to the 4th. And that leftover c is just going to go inside the square root. So that is how we do that one. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and look at decimals. I never, ever, ever want you to take the square root of decimal. I always want you to turn it into a fraction. So how do I do that? First off, you're going to put whatever numbers here on your numerator, and then you just count the place value. This is your tens, this is your hundredths, this is your thousandths, this is your ten thousandths position. So we're going to put that over ten thousand. And then we have a to the fourth. And now with a fraction, I just take the square roots of all these. So the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 10,000 is 100. And the square root of a to the fourth, remember, we just divide that by 2. Um, and that would be a to the second power. And that would be on the numerator as well. Okay. You then look at your numerator and the denominator and see if you can reduce. You cannot simplify 7 over 10. So then you're done. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at my last one here. Um, this one is very tricky because what you need to, you have this plus sign here, and this plus sign messes everything up. So first off in red, let me show you the mistakes students do. They try to do 9x squared plus 18, and they try to take the square root of both of those. You can only do that when it's multiplication. You cannot do it when there's addition. So what you want to do is, can you factor anything out of 9x squared and 18? Is there anything you can pull out or like reverse distribution? And you notice I can divide these both by 9. So if I have the square root of 9 times x squared plus 2. I want you to notice what I did there. I pulled out a 9. I divided both of these by 9, and now it's out here. So if I were to distribute, I would get that back. Now that I have a multiplication sign, I can break these up into my two uh, square roots. So I'm going to have the square root of 9 times the square root of x squared plus 2. So the square root of 9 is 3, and then I can't take the square root of x squared plus 2. Remember, guys, a big mistake is students are going to try to take the square root of uh, x squared. Do not do that. Just leave it how it is. Um, and this is your final answer. Well, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, guys, please feel free to email me or your teacher.